Hey church family, hope you're having a great Wednesday. This is Wednesday, January the 26th. So because we're not having uh, classes tonight, I just wanted to uh, drop in and share some encouraging words with you. First of all, I just want you to know how much I love all of you and I pray that you and your family are doing good. I know we've had a lot of sickness go through our church as well as our community and uh, hopefully everyone is getting better and uh, kids are getting back in school and back in the swing of things. Uh, a couple of reminders. Uh, so our Sunday Bible classes will start back on Sunday, February 6th, and then we'll start back with Wednesday classes on Wednesday, February 9th. So mark your calendars for that. I know we're excited uh, to get back in the swing of things with our Bible classes, and uh, that will be a great thing. Also, as you know, we are in the middle of a process where we are praying and uh, choosing from among our church family men to uh, rise up and serve as additional shepherds with our nine shepherds that we currently have. Uh, thank you so much for being involved in the reaffirmation part of the process. We had a great number in our church family that participated in that. All nine of our elders were reaffirmed. And so now we're in phase two, which is uh, where we are nominating different men in our church to serve as shepherds. I wanna give you a couple of reminders about that. First of all, the nomination forms are due next Wednesday, February 2nd by 7.30 p.m. Uh, so please either email that to us uh, Angela sent out an email yesterday with the online form. It's very simple uh, to, to use. And so if you prefer that, uh, then you can just do the online form. Or if you prefer the paper copy, you can stop by during the week at the church building and we'll give you a copy. Uh, you may have it from Sunday or you can pick it up this Sunday uh, and, uh, and get those turned back in. Also, I want to remind you that the number of times that a person is nominated is taken into consideration. So for example, husbands and wives, you can fill out two forms. Uh, and we're also encouraging you to speak to the men that you are wanting to nominate to ensure that they even desire to do this at this time in their life. And so I just wanted to remind us of a couple of things uh, along this time and this process. And the last thing I wanna say is this, and this is the most important part of the process, continue to pray. You know, one of the things I love about our Walnut family is I love how many devoted and committed families we have that spend time in prayer. And I don't ever want us to take that for granted because that is a gift from God where we can communicate uh, and he can be in touch with us and we can be in tune with him and his will for our life. And so please continue to pray every day as this process continues. So I want to give you a thought for a few minutes to think about as we're talking about shepherds in the church. If you go back and look in scripture in the life of the church, God has given the responsibility to various persons in to serve in a variety of leadership roles. I love what Paul says in Ephesians chapter four, starting in verse 11. And I'm reading from the easy to read version because I like how uh, this particular version states this. It says, and that same Christ gave these gifts to people, made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell good news, and some to care for and teach God's people. Christ gave these gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving to make the body of Christ stronger. One of the things that we ought to be praying for right now is we're selecting shepherds. We need shepherds that will walk alongside of us that will make us stronger in our spiritual walk. And so I want you to think about that. Paul goes on to say this work must continue until we are all joined together in what we believe and in what we know about the Son of God. And our goal is to become like a full-grown man, to look just like Christ and have all his perfection. One of the things that God wants for all of his children 
He wants us to grow up. He wants us to grow into spiritual, mature people. Because Paul says it like this, then we will no longer be like babies. We will not be people who are always changing like a ship that the waves carry one way and then another. We will not be influenced by every new teaching we hear from people who are trying to deceive us. Those who make clever plans and use every kind of trick to fool others into following the wrong way. No, we will speak the truth in love. And the beautiful part of that is how Paul says that the whole body depends on him because he's the head and all parts of the body are joined and held together with each part doing its own work. So as, as I've said over the last few weeks, it is impossible for shepherds in the church to do it all. We need to make ourselves available to encourage them, to help them, so that together we are all growing up to be mature like Jesus Christ. So if you go back to Acts chapter 6, there was a problem there. There was a great problem going on there. More and more people were becoming followers of Jesus by the time you get to Acts chapter 6. And during that time, you had the Greek-speaking followers. They were beginning to complain against other Jewish followers. And, and the simple complaint was this. They said that their widows were not getting their share of what the followers received every day. And so the 12 apostles called the whole group of followers together. And in Acts chapter 6, we're told this. It would not be right for us to give up our work of teaching God's word in order to be in charge of getting food to people. So brothers and sisters, choose seven of your men who have a good reputation. They must be full of wisdom and full of the spirit. Those are two qualities that I strongly encourage us to be praying about as we are thinking and praying about men who will rise up to serve as shepherds. We need to be choosing and calling out men in our church who are full of wisdom and full of the Spirit. In fact, it really ought to be like this. And I like how Paul says it in Galatians 5 when he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. He says the fruit that the Spirit produces in a person's life is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he says there's no law against these kinds of things. In fact, he goes on in verse 25 to say this, we get our new life from the Spirit, so we should follow the Spirit. Or some of your versions will say, keep in step with the Spirit. So may we call out men who are full of wisdom, who are full of the Spirit, who will walk alongside of us and encourage us as we all travel this journey of life together, growing up to be more and more like Jesus. Continue to think about these things, pray about them, and I hope that you have a great week, and I will see you Sunday morning at 9 o'clock.